The Bill of May Show. I'm sure you've heard the name Andrew Breitbart yourself. If you're a conservative, he's kind of a go-to guy on so many topics, and he's been out on the front of the fight for quite some time, and now he has a big target on his back as well because, well, that's what happens when you you tell the truth, and it tends to upset liberals. Mr. Breitbart, what an honor to have you. Welcome to the show. Well, Bill, I appreciate that, and, and I know everything about you because I know everything. <laughs> I'm the king of new media, and I have ubiquity, and I know everything about everything that's going on, and that's how uh, the new media is being victorious against Katie Kirk and her friends in the mainstream media. We're on war footing right now to take down what I call the Democrat media complex, which is the natural alliance of uh, Democratic interests, the Democratic Party, liberal organizations, and the mainstream media. Oh, it's a great book, and it's one of those must-reads. Uh, when did it happen to you, Andrew, when you realized for the first time that the news really wasn't the news at all? It's such a weird thing because it's like and like you're in the Matrix. Like what you think is isn't when you grow up thinking that Walter Cronkite was telling you the objective, neutral truth mm-hmm. and to find out that the most trusted, avuncular person that could possibly be crafted in a, you know, in a laboratory is motivated by a political point of view and is there on purpose to craft the political narrative, and unfortunately for the left in this country, and for me, it was as a default factory-setting liberal in Los Angeles, watching right after graduating from college, the Clarence Thomas hearings, and I watched a black man. I had been taught in college. I had been taught through culture uh, about political correctness, and I didn't understand why so many white people, like Ted Kennedy, of all people, were sitting so comfortably in judgment for this person uh, I, I, when, at the end of the hearings, there was no there there. He didn't do anything that was even remotely what they promised. And then when a, a year later I saw that Bill Clinton was given a pass on sexual harassment by the same people, it woke me up. It was a sobering, sobering event that caused me to slowly but surely realize awkwardly that the default liberal that I thought I was was actually a bona fide conservative. Well, in your book, you say, you know, the left owns the media. What's the agenda? I mean, what's driving it? Well, you get into journalism, which is a somewhat respected, theoretically a respected profession, kind of up there with doctor and, and lawyer, but it's less pain. So why would somebody get into the business of objectivity and neutrality and stenography? When I've been on panels, where I've been grudgingly been put on journalism panels. They don't want to talk about media bias, and they scoff when you talk about media bias. They say it doesn't exist and that they're professional. But on the same panels, when asked a question by somebody in the audience, like, why did you get into this in the first place? They always, always, always contradict themselves in the same panel discussion. They say, well, I got into this because of I wanted to pursue economic justice, Mm -hmm. and social justice. And Mm -hmm. those are code terms for Marxism in this country. 